We're back here courtside at the MAC Center. We'll be joined by a couple of our star players here today. We're joined first by Asia Dingle, a sophomore point guard out of Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, Asia, first and foremost, congratulations. That was uh, a wonderful performance and a big time victory. Yeah. <laughs> now, you kind of embraced this role as a, as a spark plug off the bench. He came in on Wednesday night and it was your defense that kind of set the tone. Here it was your energy and your your ability to get in inside. Now, you're a little shorthanded, no Nyla here tonight, but over 40 points in the paint, and you had a lot to do with that. So just kind of talk about what you saw from the Toledo defense and how you were so successful in being able to attack it. Um, I just said, like, if um, they weren't in front of me to attack and if they helped in, I kicked out because I could count on my teammates to knock that shot down. And just, like, whenever I had the open lane, I laid it in. Well, and once you guys kind of got in control and built that double-digit lead back up, they started to press, and then almost seemed to play into your guys' hands. Just kind of talk about your ability to not panic when they're throwing that 93 feet of defense at you, and it really allowed you to get some, some great looks and really just kind of take whatever hope Toledo had of coming back into the game. Right, we just like didn't want to be passive about it because like we had to keep scoring and playing defense, but defense was like our number one key, and we just stayed calm. Well, you saw this team uh, a few weeks ago in what was probably a very frustrating game for you guys, losing 69-60. It looked like you guys were really able to frustrate them as well. You guys, you, you and uh, Mariah drew the tough task of a pretty solid point guard collection that, that Toledo has and got them into foul trouble, frustrated them, and never really got them, allowed to let them get comfortable. What kind of changed from the game in Toledo to here and how were you so successful in shutting down one of the better point guard tandems in the league. Yeah, like that's our, our number one goal, like coming into the game is defensing and like locking down their number one or two, three players. And like we just talk about defense because defense is going to win championships. So like we're just trying to lock down a D, then our offense will, will come. Well, over the last few games, you mentioned the defense. That has been your calling card over the, the past few times. Pay no attention to the fact that they scored 68 points on you, but you've held their last seven opponents below 70, the last five until today below 65. What has kind of been that light bulb that clicked on as a team for you guys to be able to bottle everybody up so effectively on the defensive end? Um, we just lock down and guard yours. I feel like defense just gives us that spark like to produce on the offensive end. Well, last but certainly not least, I know you're you're known for your defense and your ability to drive, but you showed some range out there that had to feel pretty good draining the first three of the season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll I'm let feeling you, it. I'll let you enjoy 22.7 assists today for, for you, Asia, and uh, big thanks for you guys uh, for taking a few moments to talk with us, and congratulations on the big win. Thank you. So there is sophomore point guard Asia Dingle, 22.7 assists off the bench, helping Kent State to a 87-68 victory. We'll help wrap it up after this final timeout. Flashes win in a big way by 19 over the Toledo Rockets. Back after this on the Kent State Radio Network. We're back live here at the Max Center. Dan Griffin with you. We're joined with uh, associate head coach. I want to get your title right. <laughs> Fran Recchi and, and coach, first and foremost, what a statement win. That, that, was, that was huge. Just, what, three or four games ago, this was a team that one of the more frustrating games of the right. season. You guys got the setback, but to put it on them with a – convincing 19-point victory has to feel awful good. It does, yeah. I'm really proud of our girls. Uh, they were focused the last two days on the game plan and the scouting report. Uh, they believed they could win, and they came out. And, uh, you know, Toledo made a couple really big runs, and we didn't – we kind of answered every run that they tried to make. Well, I thought the, the pivotal part, part of the game was – the mini run that Hannah Young went on. I think <laughs> right. she went. I think she scored seven of the ten uh, that 10-0 run in the third quarter. Toledo had kind of hung around, knocked it down to a one or two possession game, and then she hits a couple of key threes and then gets her own rebound and a, and a putback. All of a sudden, like a shot in the dark, you're up 11 right. and they never got up off the mat. Right. Yeah. No. So she was a working. huge spark coming into the starting lineup here today. Just yeah. gotta talk about what what she was able to bring to the table outside of just that. 45 seconds of right. brilliance. Yeah, no, Hannah's been doing a great job in practice, especially. She's really been focusing on her defense, and she's uh, probably a lot of things that maybe go unnoticed. Uh, just her ability to help on, on the off off uh, off the ball and kind of rotate rebounds, um, defensive rebounds, getting her hands on a couple things. She's really been focusing on that in practice, and it's nice to see it translate in the games. Um, and then a couple times, you know, they weren't they were kind of daring her to shoot the ball, and she knocked a couple 
couple shots down and uh, she just gave us a great spark and it's uh, like I said it's been nice to see everything that she's been doing in practice pay off and come out in game day. Absolutely and Katie Shoemate was the, the kind of the spark that got you guys going she had I believe outscored Toledo in that first quarter herself yeah. <laughs> uh, on her way to, to 22 points no no Nyla here today kind of she steps into that f undersized four role right. and really seemed to shine but also took her uh, defensive assignment quite quite seriously as well as you guys and we'll talk about that in a second really took them out of out of rhythm and what they wanted to do yeah she had her hands full she was guarding two of their best players all night long uh, we have a lot of trust in katie and what she can do as a, especially as a freshman um, and we just asked her to be aggressive from the start offensively uh, we challenged her to get shots in the paint we tried to put her in a couple positions where she could get shots in the paint and she was probably the most aggressive she's been in transition today um, as well, and it really paid off. So I'm hoping her confidence kind of just kind of rolls from here. Obviously, uh, another big story is the spark that Asia brings off the bench with 22, seven and six, but we were talking with her uh, a little while ago. Her and Mariah really took the challenge of one of the better yeah. point guard tandems in the league to task, and Santucci, yeah, she does stuff the stat sheet with 13, five and five, but she was in foul trouble all game yeah. long. Anytime you can do, you can get her kind of off right. her game, takes Toledo out of their game. Right. Yeah. And I just kind of talk about that game plan, those two kind of really buying it in because the last few times I've, I've seen you guys play, it's been that backcourt pressure, yeah. that backcourt defense that really has sparked everything else. Yeah, they uh, they love it. You know, they, they talk to each other on the bench and they, you know, try to pick up on different cues maybe that they notice uh, sitting over here and they'll be like, Asia, you know, Ryle tell Asia, hey, before she crosses over, she takes one dribble, brings it up and goes and tries to just kind of teach each other uh, from the bench about what the other team's tendencies are. Um, as well, but they've taken, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. The last about five games, they've really just kind of taken on that role of slowing down the other team's point guards or even the shooters. I remember uh, Bowling Green. They did Absolutely. a great job on Madison Parker at Bowling Green. And, uh, you know, just the buy in on that on their end and to really, you know, teammates are gassing them up and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I, I thought an, another After Leo, I'll offer marginal legal advice. This is Handle on the Law, and it's next. All right, we're going to turn that off. Right. <laughs> um, but I, what, the point I wanted to, wanted to make there was. Toledo really kind of opened up the defensive pressure. They they went full 93 feet against you guys. And for a young team, that would be very, very easy to kind of bow to that pressure and turn the ball over. Six turnovers here today. You're plus 24 in points off turnovers. Right. And I really thought you guys' ability to create turnovers, A, yourself, but B, not succumb to their pressure was, was huge. Yeah, and if you've been watching us all season, that's something that we struggled with. You know, when teams start pressuring us in the fourth quarter, we have a tendency to turn the ball over or speed us up into taking bad shots. And I thought we kept our composure. And I thought I think we've learned uh, as the season's gone on how to handle that a little bit better. You can just hear them on the bench kind of echoing the same things that the coaching staff is saying um, in timeouts. And I think that's a sign of growth. Uh, with this young team, and um, they're not they're not timid or scared of the pressure anymore, and I think we, we have a little bit more composure to be able to break that. Final question here. It's a tough task at hand, uh, heading up to Mount Pleasant to take on Central Michigan, but you guys seem to be uh, playing some of your best defensive ball this season, and this week is you're riding with a lot of momentum in to yeah. face the chips, but that's a high-octane <laughs> offense, and uh, kind of just uh, tell us good. what it's going to take to – to do what no one other, no other MAC right, team has done this right. year. Right, yeah, no, they're they're really talented. Um, their entire roster is really good. I think we're going to have to stay really connected. We're going to have to play uh, our best defensive game of the season, and we have to put fresh on them. We have to be able to score with them at the same time. Um, you know, they're just – they have so many different weapons. It's going to be a really tough task. But I think if we, we can go in with the same mindset that we had coming into tonight – uh, you know, all five players on the floor connected at one time defensively. Uh, being able to rotate and switch out with multiple different lineups, I think, will help us as well. And then we have to be able to rebound the ball um, and then put pressure on them to guard us without fouling, maybe get a couple of their stars in foul trouble. All right, hopefully we're talking about a three-game win streak when we're <laughs> back here uh, against Miami. Best of luck against the Chips on Wednesday. All right, great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.